and we have the PWC. And I'm just going to quickly ask David to introduce this item, if that's okay. Sure, Mr. Chairman. And I'm Menlo the Cone here, uh, Kanu from the Ikea Korua, David and Jade. Uh, just, uh, Mr. Chairman, this is a follow on from our joint meeting uh, between the Independent Māori Statutory Board and the Governing Body on the 27th of November, where we presented to the councillors present uh, the findings of the audit uh, report that PWC did uh, on the um, council, uh, particularly around Tatoa Takatini and the CCOs. Uh, we asked at that joint meeting that uh, PwC present the audit to the members of the uh, full council on this committee, uh, and there are some recommendations uh, in the report, uh, Mr Chairman, uh, that uh, I certainly would move in terms of receiving the report. And to seek a further fuller report and response from council in and around uh, February uh, 2018 at a, at a uh, Finance and Performance Committee meeting then, uh, again, uh, this is to uh, allow everybody to receive the information, uh, PwC to make a presentation around that, uh, if there are any questions, I guess, uh, but more importantly, uh, seeking a more formal response uh, to, I guess, it, from my point of view and the board's point of view, uh, to strengthen Te Tōa Takatini and its purpose and its function, uh, and uh, in alignment uh, with the Mayor's proposal for the LTP, in particular paragraph 57 on page 32, uh, the collaboration uh, between the CCOs and Council in terms of the future opportunities for Māori outcomes uh, and value for money. Uh, so without further ado, Mr Chairman, I'd invite uh, David and Jade to make a presentation. Welcome, welcome Jade, welcome David. Tēnā koutou katoa, uh, tēnā koe Ross, uh, tēnā koru uh, David and, and Glenn. I'd um, just like to put my apologies in for Lara Hillier, who is the um, principal partner overseeing this, this work. Um, but um, Jade and myself were key members of the team which delivered this, this report. <coughs> so what we're planning to do is not um, do a detailed presentation because we assume the committee would have um, read the report. So what we thought we would do is just focus on a few, a few of the very key high level, high level findings. And they'll basically be around uh, the role of um, uh, Taito Takatini, as, as David outlined, and we'll also comment on um, the general expenditure profile and, and the um, uh, uh, recommendations, particularly around the, the strategy space. <coughs> so just focusing on uh, Taito Takatini initially, um, as the um, committee members would have um, seen or, or recall from the 2014 report, this um, body was, was set up to provide a strategic top-down um, view of the way uh, Māori activities and expenditure were under, undertaken by um, Council. Um, what, um, one of the issues um, they've, they've run into is that um, a number of the processes were a little bit clunky, particularly around around reporting, and and just the, the general council-wide co coordination. So, so the, there's been a lot of focus um, more on administration reporting um, outputs rather than rather than focus on outcomes and and benefits. So that's created a, a bit of a burden for both them and the other CCO. Um, stakeholders. As, as you can see by this chart that we've embedded in the, the report, they are in the, in the process of moving as, as some of these processes and systems have improved towards more of a outcome type focus. Um, but one of, the, one of the downsides also of, of being focused in this more administrative churn, of course, it, it's created a little bit of confusion about their, their role. And so we've also included in the report a, a recommendation that there's a little bit more communication around what their true role is, which is actually strategic and top-down rather than rather than bottom bottom up. So at the time of our assessment, half of the issues raised by KPMG in their 2014 assessment of council's expenditure uh, remained unresolved. 
while an initial response was provided by the council in 2014 um, to KPMG's report, we noted that there was no further work program put in place to address the 2014 recommendations. Um, and as such, there remain about 52% of their recommendations open. We have included these in our report uh, as part of the current uh, 2017 uh, findings and recommendations raised. Te Toa Takatini's transition plan includes some of these prior issues and recommendations from 2014, as well as some of our current recommendations. This is a positive step forward uh, to focusing more on outcomes um, rather than just output, as David mentioned earlier. To enhance this transition, one of our significant recommendations uh, is that there's a greater strategic alignment between the Council and the IMSB's key strategic priorities for Māori um, and greater traceability between these strategic documents um, and project plans, monitoring and reports. This is needed to ensure that there's clear focus on Māori outcomes up front uh, in project planning um, and also monitoring of those outcomes and, and outcome achievement throughout the life cycle of these projects. Early strategic engagement alignment uh, and guidance on the outcomes that are targeted will enable a clear path for the successful delivery of Māori outcomes and support greater collaboration uh, discussions across the Council uh, throughout projects. I'll just touch on the expenditure assessment. Um, with regard to this assessment, we identified underspending from CCOs across both years of focus, so that was 2015-16, so it was a shortfall of 925,000, and also in 2016-17, uh, a shortfall of 300,000. In contrast to the 2014 assessment, while we are seeing commitment to budgets and monitoring um, over the past few years, it is disappointing to still see underspend, as these represent missed opportunities to deliver on priorities. Yeah. Improvements to project planning um, and risk escalation around uh, any project risks are required to minimise um, potential underspend from reoccurring. So essentially these are the key messages uh, from our assessment. Um, happy to take any questions from the committee. Thank you, um, Councillor. So obviously paragraph three is not, doesn't make flash reading whatsoever, no. and nor does the chart uh, which is in front of you here. So um, we do have um, significant work to do to, to reach up and reach, reach those aspirations. Yeah. So I don't think there's any too much debate about that. Councillor Clasing. I'm sorry I missed the um, joint meeting with the Independent Maui Statutory Board, but I'll make up for it with my questions today. Um, I'm, a, I'm a wee bit horrified by the comments with regard to the projects not reported by the CCOs. There's eight that were um, on, it's on our page 64 reported but not executed and you at this time can't tell me why not and they can't tell us why not nor have they and, and you're suggesting in the recommendations that we strengthen the letter of expectation about reporting so how are we implementing the recommendations that's my question it's probably not for you it's through the chair the, you know th that would be one example where we can do something about it yep. so how, how are we putting into effect something that will fix some of these things well, it was through the letters of expectation. I'm sure the mayor is totally taking that on board and, and knowing how to use that as an instrument to to get more activity. Um, so maybe he'll want to comment later on that. But I'm, I'm also interested in the reasons. You know, like we've got this table on of, of projects not executed. And I want to know why not. So it's not just looking forward; it's looking back. What happened to the money that was allocated for those? Are they coming? Are they just not coming? Is nobody really interested in them? I think it's probably fair to say there's a common combination of those things. I mean, the, a lot of the reasons why um, projects weren't undertaken were, um, I guess, what you would um, typically find in, in council with, with capital works, things get delayed, maybe resource consent issues, um, um, planning may not be um, up to speed with, with where the money needs, needs to be spent. So it was really a whole pot pour out. I think there was a you know, particular single issue. It was just, you know, quite widespread. So you know why these projects weren't executed, but we don't. <coughs> is that, is that, so you, are you happy that there are good reasons for them not being executed? Is that what you're telling us? Well, I, I suppose what I'm saying is that a lot of the reasons are, are, are no different 
to um, council projects generally which aren't, aren't actually executed in, in a year. I mean, there's just lots of, lots of reasons. And councillor, I mean, the recommendations when we put them up, but you've got it in the paper, I mean, that, <coughs> that is actually when we're coming back. Uh, recommendation B has just been tightened a little bit by adding the date, 27th of February, and um, that the report will be addressing <coughs> number of the recommendations so it, and through, through the chair isn't part of it though that the CCOs are reporting to different committees yes no well like there's, there's, there's no th this report kind of brought everything together but then it'll all be farmed out to different committees with different sets of s interrogation if you like with CCOs I think my, my I'm, <coughs> I'm looking at you but I'm suggesting that maybe we need the committee back that used to oversee the CCOs well, we don't have a CCO <coughs> committee uh, anymore. We're the spread over the a couple. CCOs did report. Uh, they were here for the presentation of this report, and they were taking it on board. And I think that was useful, as uh, was Chairman Tyfree would acknowledge. Yeah. Was oh, I wasn't no, yeah. That, no, that we may have possibly given the point. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, just that I understood that under the basis of the new committee structure, this was the uh, this is the finance and performance committee yep. which CCOs report to, yep. but. To acknowledge uh, the CCOs, we invited the chairs and the, and the yep. chief executives uh, to the joint meeting, which they attended in full. Uh, and since then, I've met with them uh, again uh, to reiterate and find ways forward. But again, it's important, I think, to receive this information today mm -hmm. uh, as a formal committee of council and finance performance, uh, then to have it assessed uh, from a council perspective and then reported back on with an implementation plan to address the recommendations that are in there, uh, should the council be willing to do so or not. So that's what I find important now, is to receive this uh, and report back in February, uh, if that's uh, mm -hmm. convenient, and from that point, uh, address the recommendations in an implementation strategy. That's, that's critical. Councillor uh, Thank you, Chair. Now, Jade, you mentioned um, underspend. Where the... Um, Where, with the CCOs or within council, were the underspends? Sure. Um, so I, I, sorry, and, and just to preface that, I know that we've got our Te Toa Takatini with Te Karawa, Painga and Te Aki. So, I mean, do you know which, which of the, 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 the streams that we ended up getting the underspend? Yeah, so we <coughs> focused the expenditure assessment on four CCOs, which you see up on the screen here. Um, what we, I don't have that information in front of me in terms of which sure. five stream okay. um, had the most underspend, um, but what we have highlighted was that in the first year of assessment, it was Auckland Transport with a significant underspend. Yep, um, and in, in 18, uh, in the 2016-17 year. Um, and as David mentioned earlier, the primary reasons for that were around project planning, delays in project starting, um, not anticipating correctly the, what the budget requirements were for these particular projects. <coughs> yeah, some of the larger ticket items, like in AT, yeah. was related to Māori tourism. And with Auckland Transport, it was around um, um, youth and um, driver safety. Yeah, yeah, I... I spoke to a, uh, Auckland Transport and understood where uh, and what had occurred and the catch-up that will happen. Yeah. Chair, I, I just wanted to save my comments when we get to the report as well. Thank you. Any further questions? Yeah, we're here at the end. Thank you, Wilbur. I'm going to harp on this again because I never hear it on the train. How much money did Auckland Transport put towards the rail on the train? I don't think I don't think they did in this in this um, in this it could because we only considered the expenditure through to um, 30, 30th of um, June of this year. Yes. So that's I think that's the issue is implementation. I think that that stands up really clearly. Then it's implementation that's the problem. Thank you. Yes, I believe we spent more on our lift. <laughs> Which was a good thing, by the way.
The floor is yours, Councillor. Oh, speaking? Yep. Yep. The floor is yours. Chair, all. I'm glad that the, 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 the three reports, and I'm glad that this has come uh, to the committee. What I do, however, Chair, in regards to uh, B, I just want to ensure that, look, it's not only the CCOs that are sponsors uh, for Te Tō Takatini, but I think it's important that um, a discussion takes place with, with uh, some of the directors within council. For example, I know that with Faitika, um, Patricia Reed is, is, is the sponsor there around capability, and I know that you know, she, she's doing um, very well in regards to, to, to um, the Māori spend. Um, but I think, but I think uh, <coughs> the, the other sponsors uh, of, of uh, some of our um, sort of rawa, painga, tiaki, they need to sort of at least be spoken to around uh, underspend. And I, I, I think it's just important that we get all the information regards that. I also know that uh, Fairawa, for example, the economic, uh, again, with the new CEO there, uh, that relationship is going well in regards to the reporting. But I think if all of them were uh, reporting back on the, um, the same template and being really committed to this, I'm not saying that, it, that there's no commitment, but I think it's important that we have it there um, we would then alleviate uh, the issue that we have in point three and the first bullet point, which is 52% of findings from 2014 assessment remain outstanding. So, look, at those, those are just my comments, and I look forward to, to the report coming back with, with some of the details and the questions I asked at our joint uh, meeting with the Independent Māori Statutory Board uh, Chair. Thank you. Any further comments? I'll just follow on if I may, Mr. Yes, yep. so again, uh, as I said at the joint meeting, uh, this is a tool. Uh, it's not to be seen in isolation. It makes the, the number of uh, reports that we've provided over the, the years, uh, starting right back with our first audit, uh, relates strongly to our schedule of issues of significance in the Māori plan. Uh, then relates back to the KPMG uh, assessment in 2014, uh, which a roadmap was provided. Uh, so, again, this is just part, another part of trying to make Council uh, better and understand more about the way forward. And, again, uh, it's not about just throwing a whole bunch of money at something and hope, hopefully it sticks. It's about making sure that we're actually getting something out of that spend and the people themselves who rely on that uh, are benefiting from that and the opportunities are available to them. So, again, uh, this is, I've said it before, it's not a big stick to whack over the head. Uh, this is an assessment that was done uh, based in 2015-16, so the, the spend with uh, Auckland Transport or underspend, uh, and the following year. Uh, and we can acknowledge that uh, things have improved in, as we are in 17-18, but what we have realised from this report is that we need to get clearer about the Tō Takatini's purpose and function. That's something we would all want, I would have thought. And again, uh, as I said before earlier, uh, reiterated in the Mayor's proposal for the LTP, the need to collaborate to be more effective and efficient uh, with the dollars that are being used uh, for Māori outcomes. So I think this is a great uh, tool, uh, should not be scared of it, uh, should grasp hold of it, utilise, utilise it as an opportunity uh, to be wise and spend wise and create better opportunities for people in Auckland, uh, not just for Māori but everybody. So on that basis, Mr Chairman, uh, as I said earlier before, I'd, I'd seek to move uh, the A and B with, with the addition of it being 27th of February. I didn't want to be so bold to uh, say immediately, uh, but uh, February's perfect. So um, <laughs> I'm happy to uh, support the red writing additions uh, and, uh, and put those motions forward. With right. one of us talking to us. Thank you, members. So I did ask Brandy and Catherine and David if it was okay to tighten it up a little bit there. So just puts a bit more specificity into it. And um, so we have a mover and we have a seconder, so I'll Just a quick Councilor question, Cashball. I'm sure it's to you, sir, or to the staff, Mr Chair. And that's about the report coming back in February about the specificity of the, the amount of detail we have here. So we've got some, you know, 
budgets and actuals, and we have in the Tautakatini work a lots of different streams. And I think David's comments about it's not always about the dollars, it's about the outcomes, is a very, very crucial one. So will we have detail around the multiple streams, and there are multiple streams of activity trying to work with Māori to improve outcomes, improve results. Will we have a measured process of dollars put in, outcomes received, and a success fail rate? Come back in this report in February, or is that further work to be done on that? Just ask Graham, you've been caught on the hop a little bit here by your question, because he was looking at something else. So Graham, can you respond to Councillor Cashmore's wide-ranging questions? <laughs> I didn't catch all your question, but um, to talk Takatini, um, you know, as we've said before, is in transition and is highlighted in the report as well. And um, we are concentrating on uh, outcomes and things that are transformational Māori, as is defined in, um, in our paperwork. Uh, the reporting system back through um, to council uh, at the joint IMSB um, governing body and to this FMP. Um, committee will will change. Um, there is definitely um, that envisaged out, out of the IG process, the investment group process. So the outcomes be defined um, up front before expenditure is committed, and then um, the monitoring, if you like, of of the program of um, projects as as they proceed. Um, so that's quite a bit different to what's been happening in the past. So that's where we're going to. So from July 1 next year, that should be fully implemented. Thanks, Mr. That's going to be across council and whole of family. Yes. Total spends. Yes. Yep. And total result outcomes. Great. That's what we need to see. All right. Well, I'll put, put the resolution. Um, all those in favour? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Against? <laughs> Give it another go. Right. We will put the resolution that's been moved oh. by. Just so enthusiastic. And the Taipei seconded by myself. All those in favour for A and B? Aye. 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 Against? Thank you. Right. Thank you, Jade. Thank you, David. I appreciate your Thanks, coming and our apologies for keeping you waiting. Um, but we're just working out how to consult with you.